As I was playing through my first few Minecraft recreations of Help Wanted 2, I realized how much more fun and exciting it was compared to my other FNAF builds. I've been so used to the gameplay of simple office survival in flat mode that it never occurred to me how much more different it would be to play with completely new mechanics while inside of VR. Being in the actual world you're playing in means that things are going to be a lot more detailed, so building each level from scratch has challenged me to mess around with different Minecraft commands and features to capture the original gameplay as closely as possible. And since Help Wanted 2 has quickly become one of my new favorite FNAF games, I knew that I had to continue to recreate more of its minigames in Minecraft. So let's jump right back into it and see what minigames I'll be making next. Let's start this video off by taking a look at the first level in the backstage category, Arts and Crafts in the Daycare. This game has the daycare attendant show us a template of a painting or a paper pal, and it's our job to make an exact copy by using different materials around us. Each item is displayed on two shelves, and we have to use a dart gun to get Sun to give us the item to make it. To beat the level, three different templates need to be copied exactly, all before a time limit runs out. However, if we submit an incorrect copy too many times, the game will end with a jump scare. Now since this all takes place inside the daycare and I really don't want to build it from scratch for a third time, what I've done is copied the build over from my original Pizzaplex map and then added the play area from Help Wanted 2 into this corner. So we can get straight into working on the gameplay and I think it will be best to start with figuring out how we can actually get the items from the shelves so that way we can make the art itself. First things first, I decided to use snowballs as the dart gun so that way we don't have to worry about any load times by using something like a bow and arrow. Now for the game to actually know which item I've selected, I've put an armor stand in front of each item frame, that way when the snowball gets within a certain radius of the entity, a command block can send an output to power a system. And that system is a command block that will replace the first slot in our inventory with the item that's in the selected item frame. For the time being, I've just used random items as placeholders, but you can see that when I throw the snowball at an item frame, that item is then going to be given to me, so that way I can use it for whatever art I'm currently making. However, just because there are only 8 items displayed at once, it doesn't mean that's all that's available, as we can pull the cord next to us to rotate between a different selection of items. Now by itself, we're not able to interact with the birch fences I've used for the rope, so what I'll be doing is using a baby zombie to act as the prompt to switch between the different items. These have played a big part in the project, and every level so far has used them for multiple different purposes. Now here's where the first scoreboard comes in, as to switch between the different pages of items on the shelves, I'll be using a scoreboard counter that increases every time the zombie takes damage. As for the items themselves, I've set up 6 walls of item frames to be the 6 combinations of items that will appear on the shelves. When the scoreboard hits a certain number, a different command block chain will power, which will then replace the items on the shelves with the ones from these item frames. So now that this all works, I should probably go over my idea of how I want to make each art piece. As you might have noticed already, I've put a loom in the corner of this table here, and that's not just because it looks like the shredder Sun uses when we finish an art piece, but because for round 1, we're going to be using different banners and dies to recreate each different painting. Before starting on any of the commands, I first need to make the different template combinations that we need to copy during the minigame. Now obviously banners in Minecraft are nowhere near as detailed as the paintings in Help Wanted, but I still managed to make some themed patterns that could take some time to recreate. With them all ready, I next made a randomizer system that gives each banner a 1 in 8 chance to be copied into the build to show us which one we need to recreate for round 1. So now to finally let us make the patterns themselves, I went ahead and added in the proper items into the item frames, which each has a random number of dies and banners that will get placed into the two shelves up above. Once we've copied the banner exactly, we now need a way to submit it and let the system know whether it's right or wrong. Now it took some time for me to put this together as the commands needed to use the block data of every single banner, so that way the detection system knew if we submitted the right combination. So if we place down a banner with the same combination as the template, an execute command will send an output to end the round, but if we place a banner with a different pattern, another command block will power and tell us that we did it wrong. It's now time to wrap up round 1 by adding in the time system that limits how long we can take to make the banner. In Help Wanted, this is shown off by using a timer on the desk, so to try and keep the feeling of seeing that time slowly drain, I'll be using a clock and some scoreboards that will change the time of day to make it seem like a timer is counting down. This lasts for about a minute and 50 seconds, and throughout that time as the scoreboard hits a certain number, it will then power a command block to change the time of day. If the clock does a full rotation then we'll lose the minigame, but if we submit the correct banner before that, the timer will then reset and then we can move on to round 2. 
For this example, you can see that the Bonnie painting is the pattern I need to recreate, and in my inventory I have a finished copy of the exact same banner. Now to submit it, all I need to do is place it on top of this loom here, then go ahead and press the submit button on the side of this desk, and that will let the system know that we're ready, and if we got it right, it will then move us on to the next round. This is when the art starts to get a bit more complicated, as the next thing we have to do is make a paper pal by putting together different materials from the shelves. And since I really like the idea of attaching different parts of the paper pal together, I've decided to use armor stands so that way we can use dyed armor to make it look like how it should. Now in Help Wanted, round 2 only has us put the paper pal together and not paint it, but since it would have made this part of the game really simple, I've decided that both rounds 2 and 3 in this recreation will need us to use different coloured items. So after round 1 ends, the items on the shelves will be replaced with a mix of dyed armor and player heads, so that way we can make the paper pal itself. This works in the same way as before, where throwing the snowball at an item frame will give us that item, which we can then put on the armor stands. Now the reason why there are three of them instead of just one, is so that way the arms on the middle armor stand can be covered by using the leg armor of the two on top of it. But since this would usually mean that armor can be put on those armor stands too, I've locked the rest of their inventories so that way we can't interact with those item slots. Now that we have the tools ready to make them, I next made the eight different templates for each paper pal, with each one having a completely different combination of dyed armor and player heads. And just like the banners, a randomizer will power when the round starts, which will then teleport one of them up into the build so that way we know which one needs to be copied. As this happens, another scoreboard will be set to a specific number depending which template gets selected, this way the detection system knows which template is active and can detect the right combination when we submit it later on. Now normally detecting if an armor stand is wearing certain armor is pretty simple, but this time I needed a command block to know if all three armor stands are wearing certain armor with a specific die attached to it. So to get this to work, I had to use the die color number ID for every single armor slot, which in all honesty was pretty confusing and complicated at first since I've never messed around with any of these before. That and the fact that it just made the command itself a lot longer made me split things up into three different command blocks just so I could keep track of each armor stand's data. Then once I was done with them all, I combined them back into a single command block that will send an output when the right armor is equipped and when we press the submit button. With the main gameplay all done, there's still one last feature that gets added during this round, and those are the light bulbs on the item shelves that will turn the lights out if they're hit with the dark gun. So to recreate this mechanic, a redstone lamp will replace a random item on both shelves every time it cycles between the different item pages. Now just like before, if the snowball hits the item frame with that item on it, it will still give us the redstone lamp, but this time it will power a new system at the same time. If this command block detects as a redstone lamp in our inventory, it will then increase the scoreboard count that keeps track of every time the lights go out. Every time this happens, we'll be quickly taken to a black room to make it seem like the lights are turned off, before then returning to the daycare again like normal. However, once the scoreboard matches 3 and a redstone lamp gets hit again, it will then trigger Moon's jump scare instead and end the game. For now though, I'll be leaving the jump scares until the very end, as the rest of the minigame doesn't rely on them appearing throughout the level. Let's now completely finish the gameplay itself and move on to the third and final round. As I mentioned earlier, this round will have us do the exact same thing as round 2, so I can reuse everything I've just built, but I still need to make sure that the systems know that this is a completely new round. So as soon as we submit the finished paper pal, the template will get teleported back under the build, and then the copied one will have all of its armor removed, so that way we have the space to work on the next one. Finally, the randomizer will power again to select the new template, and then round 3 will play out in the exact same way as before. Once we beat it though, things need to work a little bit differently, as instead of starting another round, the game needs to end and reset itself for the next time we play it. All of this is done in a single chain of command blocks that powers different commands that range from teleporting armor stands to even changing the values of different scoreboards. After this happens, we'll then be taken to the game 1 screen where we can then collect our prize for beating the game. I went over my idea for these in the first video, but every minigame has 3 of the same room attached to it, with one of them being for when we win the game, one for when we lose, and one that serves as the tutorial before the game starts. We'll go over the last two later, but as of now, the game one room has three different prompts that can be interacted with. The first two are on the table next to us, which will take us back to the hub if we press the hub button, or we can hit the retry button and play the mini game again. But the most important thing is the prize we unlock by pressing the button on the cupcake machine. The first item we get is a custom player head of a present, before then getting the prize itself, which for this minigame is the sun model that can be displayed 
displayed on the stage in the hub. Currently, Glamrock Freddy and Ballora are the only two models that have been added so far, but as they finish making more of the minigames, more of the animatronic models will be able to be displayed in more detail. So now that we can win the minigame, let's take a look at how we can lose if we get jump scared by Sun or Moon. It's taken a while to get to this point, but I finally decided to add in the daycare attendant where he stands in front of us for the entire time we're playing. 11 different armor stands make him up, but I'll be able to move and change the position of each one to give him some of the animations that we see in Help Wanted. The first one is the default idle animation that we'll be seeing for the majority of the game. Now since each limb is a different armor stand, every single one needs to be moved individually and at the same time in a way that keeps everything together while still making everything look smooth. Starting with the head, a repeating command block will teleport Sun's face to look towards us at all time, that way he's always facing us even while the rest of his body is moving. To then make him look more lifelike, I gave Sun a slight bouncing animation by having every single armor stand teleport slightly up and down, and then changing the poses of both of his arms to make him wave around as he watches us make the art. The next one is when Sun disapproves of our art if we submit an incorrect copy. This one was a lot more simple to set up as the armor stands will stop bouncing and then he will quickly shake his head from side to side. It's a very basic movement but I do think it really adds a whole lot more to the minigame to make it feel a whole lot more fun and immersive. But with those animations done, it was now time to move on to the last one, which is when Sun picks up the art piece we've just made and puts it in the shredder. Instead of just being a simple animation like the rest, however, this part needed an extra step as I wanted Sun to actually pick up the banner and move it around. This is done by using a separate armor stand that will have the item on its head replaced with the current banner template for that round. When we submit the copy, that armor stand will then teleport in place of the one we just made, which will then teleport in a way that looks like Sun picked it up and dropped it in the shredder. The same thing will happen when we submit the paper pal for round 2, and the last animation is for once we beat round 3 just as the game ends. This time however instead of picking up the paper pal, all of the armor stands for it will disappear so that way we can see Sun jump up and down as a celebration for beating the game. This leaves the jump scare as the final feature left to add for this minigame which actually uses a completely different model of the daycare attendant instead of the same one from before. It's a lot easier to set this up this way as this all takes place in a completely separate room and and the jump scare itself has Sun in an upside down position while also going through their own set of animations. However, what makes this different from any other jump scare I've made so far is that depending on what causes us to lose the game will change who actually jump scares us. In this chest are different items that will swap out the armor on the jump scare armor stands with the character that needs to jump scare us. If we run out of time to make the art, then the sun items will be added so sun can jump scare us, but if we break the lights too many times, the moon armor will be added instead and moon will then jump scare us. After that's played out, we'll next be taken to the game over screen where just like the game one room, we have the same option options to play the minigame again or go back to the hub and play something else. So while we're in the hub, we might as well add the final feature which is to let us start the game itself. In part 1, we took a look at the entire minigame selection screen where by throwing an item from a minecart, we'll be able to play the different levels. Now when we throw the arts and craft item from the backstage menu, we'll be teleported to its tutorial room before the game itself begins. The way I have these work is by having different player heads describe the gameplay of the minigame and then have an armor stand change its name to explain it in more detail. But some minigames like this one have more than one tutorial screen, so by pressing the next tip button, the current player heads and text will change to show more details on how to play the game. The last thing to do is to press the start button which will then teleport us to the play area itself and the game can finally begin. And now just after a week of work later and over a thousand command blocks, everything to do with this minigame is now fully completed. And like I usually do, I've gone ahead and added in some sound effects in my own time, that way there's actually noises when we play the minigame. But overall, I really like how everything has turned out, and I'm really looking forward to trying it out in VR later on. But for now, let's keep on going and move along to the next minigame. After we complete the cold storage level in the staff only category, the next minigame that becomes available is first aid with pig patch. And in a similar way to cold storage, we have to make different repairs on Helpy by using different medical items in order to beat the game. This time however, we're not alone as we do this, as another animatronic is active and roaming around the vent system surrounding us. 
Now, since everything here is on a much smaller scale and I'm working in the limits of non-modded Minecraft, you might be wondering how I'll be able to recreate every single detail while also being able to perform the tasks individually. But in all honesty, I don't think it's going to be as hard as you might think, especially considering I've already built a level similar to this. So this here is the helpy armor stand that we'll be working with for the entire minigame. There's one armor stand for the chest and the head, one for each arm, and one for the legs and the feet. And on either side of them are two different player head monitors that will eventually show us what tasks need to be done and how we're able to complete them. Now to actually complete those tasks, there's a whole lot of different items that we're going to need, and each one is going to be stored in one of these two minecart chests. So to get started on the core gameplay itself, let's go through each task one by one and see how we can recreate them. In this specific level of first aid, there are only five different repairs that can get assigned across three total rounds. And with this minigame serving as the tutorial, the tasks here are going to be a lot more simple than those in future levels. In round one, the most common task is where we have to clean some dirt off of Helpy's hands by using a woolen cloth. So in Minecraft, this starts out by replacing both of Helpy's hand armor with grey ones to make it easier to tell that they need cleaning. So if this task gets selected for the round, a command block will then send an output to replace the boots of the armor stand with the ones from this chest. Next, we need to set up the item that we'll be using to clean the hands with, which I've decided to use bone meal for. The system starts with a repeating command block detecting for when we're holding that specific item, which will then send an output when we're doing so. From there, we only want this command block to power if we're looking at the part of Helpy that needs cleaning, so I've added another command to the block that will only send an output if we're looking at a certain armor stand, which for this task is the one for Helpy's right hand. Finally, to let us decide whether we actually want to use the item or not, one final final setup is needed, which this time is detecting for when we're crouching. This needed its own new scoreboard to work, which is constantly going to increase whenever I hold down the shift key. However, that number needs to reset when I stop crouching, so this command block will do just that, now making it so that the command only powers while I'm crouching. Now adding that command to the same command block from earlier, when all three commands power at the same time, it will then send an output to power the next setup. Now because the hands don't instantly clean themselves the moment we use the cloth, we need a way to make sure that we use it for a certain amount of time. That's where this last scoreboard comes into play, as while the command block is still powered, it will keep on counting up until it reaches a certain limit. As it's doing so, three last repeating command blocks will detect when the number gets within a certain range to then power a command block that will then replace the armor on Helpy's hands. So instead of going straight from grey back to magenta, the hands will change color to show the progress being made until the hands go back to normal and the task gets completed. The next task is a little similar, but it involves an extra step to be able to be done right. Whenever Helpy has a scratch on his leg, we first need to spray it with the correct disinfectant spray before then putting a band-aid over it to patch it up. This starts in the exact same way as the last task, where we need to be holding a certain item while looking at a specific armor stand, which also has a different colored armor on it to let us know that it needs fixing. This time though, instead of there just being one item to use, there are three other spray bottles inside the chest, and we have to use the right one for the command blocks to send an output. Once we hold the right item while crouching for a short amount of time, the grey armor on Helpy will be replaced with white dye again to show that the area has been cleaned. This will let us move on to the next step, which is to put a band-aid over Helpy's leg. For this, I'll be using a named brick that will also be stored in the chest to the right alongside all the other medical supplies. By holding the item while looking at the armor stand for Helpy's legs, a command block will then send an output to complete the task. Lastly, the item will then get removed from our inventory when we use it, and will then get replaced inside the minecart chest for the next time we need to use it. This brings us to the third task, which is the most simple of them all, and it only requires one step to complete. Sometimes Helpy's foot will be broken, and the only way to repair it is by putting a cast around it. In this recreation, the armor stand's leg will stick up to indicate that it needs fixing. But with the single step of using an armor stand item as the cast, all we have to do is crouch with it in our hand while looking at the broken leg, which will then put it back to normal. So now let's take a look at the last two tasks, where we need to start to use the face mask to stop Helpy from screaming when he gets hurt. The first example is when Helpy has a mark on his leg and we need to hit it with the hammer to make him feel better. If this task gets selected, an armor stand holding a spider eye will teleport just above Helpy's leg to show us where we need to use the hammer. Speaking of which, the hammer itself is a golden axe with max unbreaking on it to stop it from taking any damage. Now at the same time that the armor stand teleports into place, a silverfish will also teleport up into the build to act as the hitbox for where we need to use the hammer. When we hit it, the entity is then going to take damage 
and this command block will then detect it and send an output to remove both the armor stand and the silverfish away from Helpy. This isn't the end of the task however, as when we hit Helpy, there's a small chance that he'll be hurt by the hit and start to cry out loud. Now in Help Wanted, this is determined by how hard we use the hammer, as lightly tapping on his leg will cause him not to feel any pain at all. Now since that's hard to detect in Minecraft, a 50-50 randomizer will be the thing to decide whether Helpy will feel the hit or not. If he doesn't, then the task is simply going to finish, but if he does, we'll have to go through another extra sequence. If this happens, a command block will then change Helpy's pose to make his head lift up, letting us know that he's in pain. At this point, there's only one way to calm him down, and that's to use the face mask that's placed on top of the left monitor. Now, since I've used an armor stand to hold the player head, a command block can detect whether the entity is wearing it or not, which can let us send an output to power a system. The first thing that's going to happen is a command block will replace Helpy's player head with one with a different texture on it to show that the mask is over Helpy's mouth. This can be toggled on and off by taking the mask player head from the armor stand, and putting it back on will revert Helpy player head back to normal. However, instead of us being the ones to actually take the mask on and off, there is a set timer for how long it stays on Helpy before then being removed automatically. So by using a scoreboard timer that starts to increase when the mask is put on, the score will keep on increasing until it reaches 100 ticks, where Helpy's head will then go back to normal and the mask item gets put back on the armor stand. This leaves one last task left to add, which can once again result in Helpy screaming. The task begins with Helpy choking on something, and we have to use a pen and a hammer to let him breathe again. The pen we'll be using for this section is a renamed blaze rod, and the way we'll be able to put it over Helpy's neck is by giving it to an armor stand that's placed above Helpy's torso. And just like how we can detect if an armor stand is wearing armor, we can also detect if one is holding a specific item in its hand. So once we give it the blaze rod, it will then start the next step, which is to use the hammer to to push down the pen. So just like before, we need a hitbox to use, so another silverfish will spawn and teleport just above Helpy's head. When it takes damage, the silverfish and armor stand will both be teleported away, and another 50-50 randomizer will start to choose whether Helpy will feel any pain or not. If he doesn't, then the round is going to end, but if he does, all we have to do is use the mask again for a few seconds to calm him back down to normal. With the tasks all completed, the next thing I worked on was the randomizer system that chooses which tasks we get for each round. When an armor stand lands on one of five others, a command block will then send an output to power a scoreboard to activate a specific task. However, since we don't want the same task to be selected multiple times in a single round, its name will change once it's been landed on, so that way the command block doesn't recognize it anymore and can no longer be teleported to. However, for every new round we get to, there's an additional task that needs to be completed. So when a new round begins, a different command block will power the randomizer to increase the amount of tasks it will then select. This means in round 1 we'll have one task to complete, in round 2 we'll have two, and finally there will be three tasks in round 3. However, the third randomizer works a little differently than the rest, as instead of teleporting to the same three armor stands over and over again, the armor stand will instead teleport to one of two separate ones when it chooses the third task. And that's because round 3 has a scripted sequence where we have to use the mask on Helpy, so that way we get introduced to how its mechanic works. The next thing to do was to let the system know how many tasks we've completed, so that way the round ends once they're all finished with. This is done by using a scoreboard command that will increase by 1 every time the randomizer selects a task, and will decrease by 1 whenever we beat it. However, once the score reaches 0, it will then power a chain of command blocks that will then turn off all of the task commands, and then power the randomizer again to set things up for the next round. However, instead of instantly moving on to the next one, there's a small sequence at the end where we first need to give Helpy a piece of candy from the bucket. So now when the command block detects that the scoreboard reaches 0, it will instead power a quick 2 frame animation of Helpy sitting up at the table. To then actually end the round and move on to the next one, a second command block will send an output when we take the player head off the cupcake armor stand. This will then trigger another animation of Helpy, this time of him eating the candy, before then resetting all of the commands so that way the next round can begin. This leaves us with one last feature left for the medical side of the minigame, where we last need to add in the scanner to look for injuries, and then have the two monitors show us how to fix them. Now the scanner itself was pretty simple to set up, as a command block will send an output when I crouch with it in my hand, but when it came to the two monitors, I wanted to find a way to display everything needed all within the limits of the player heads. 
So after doing a little messing around with different mechanics, I've still decided on using custom player heads, but to have their texture change for every task we get. So the monitors on the left are going to show us where unhealthy the injury is, and the ones on the right are going to show us how to fix them. Now it is a bit of a rough description since each one is limited to the 8x8 resolution of the player head, however I still think this is the best way to go about doing this while sticking to the scale of the build. Now the way each one gets copied into the build when they're needed is by using this single chain of command blocks here, where you can see the player heads that each command block is connected to. So once we use the scanner right to unhealthy, this command block is then going to send an output, which is then going to power all of these command blocks at the same time. The thing is though, is that not all of them are going to copy the player head on top of them, and that's because at the start of each of these command blocks is an execute command that is stopping the clone command from powering unless this scoreboard matches one. This means that if the task isn't selected for that round, the command block isn't going going to be able to power, and the output will instead move on to the next command block where the same thing is going to keep on happening all the way until it reaches the end of the chain. Now this actually works the other way around as well, as once we finish a task, the score for it also gets set back down to zero, meaning if we use the scanner again, it's going to skip over the commands for the task we just completed, and it's instead going to power the next two command blocks where it's then going to copy the player heads for that task up into the build instead. And this is going to keep on happening over and over until we finish every task, where the final player head that gets copied into the build is this one right here, which is the one to let us know that all we have to do is give Helpy the piece of candy to move on to the next round. But that now wraps up everything for the Helpy side of the minigame, so it's finally time to move on to the survival side of it, where we have to defend against Pig Patch. The first thing I worked on was the movement cycle, which starts by detecting if there's a certain type of block underneath the armor stand. If the command block powers while the entity is on top of pink concrete, it will then cause the armor stands to slowly teleport forward. Once it reaches the corner, we then want it to move in a different direction, so that way it goes towards the office. So for this, a second layer of different colored concrete is placed underneath the vent, which will make the armor stand change direction when it goes on top of it. Finally, to have the armor stand itself face towards the office when it turns, one more command block is looking for a third type of concrete, which will keep on rotating the armor stand until it faces in our direction. So with the basic movement all done, I then wanted to make the armor stand look a bit more lifelike by making Pig Patch always look towards the player. This works by having a completely separate armor stand of the head that is always set to teleport alongside the rest of the body, but to have it facing towards the player entity. So even while the rest of the body is changing direction when it turns the corner, Pig Patch's head will always be looking at us no matter what. So now that Pig Patch can go towards the office, we now want him to go back into the vent and end his attack sequence. Now since this is determined through whether Helpy is screaming or not, I've added a new scoreboard that will be set to 1 if Helpy gets hurt, which will then power the teleport commands we've just set up to move Pig Patch towards the office. To then move him back into the vents when the score is set to 0, each of the layers of concrete needs to be changed to a different colour, so that way a chain of command blocks can reverse the armor stand's movements by teleporting them in the opposite direction. So now that he's able to go forwards and backwards, I could now add in the proper animations to make him look like he's actually crawling through the vent. However, instead of using the normal arms of the armor stand, I instead decided to use the leg armor of two separate ones, so that way each arm had a casing around it. To then have the arms themselves move, I messed around with different positions for the arms and the head, before then connecting everything to a hopper clock to constantly make Pig Patch go through his crawling animation. Once all of this had been touched up and worked the way it should, I then went ahead and copied the entire system them over to the opposite vent so that way Pig Patch could attack from the right side as well. To then decide which vent he'll come from, I added a 50-50 randomizer that will power once Helby gets hurt, which will then power either the left side commands or the right side ones. No matter which vent he's in though, once the mask is used on Helby, Pig Patch will then move back into the vent where his cycle will then reset for the next time he becomes active. However, Pig Patch himself doesn't become an actual threat until round 3 starts, and the vents in the curtain in front of us don't even open up until round 2. So the next thing I added was a system that will block off the vents in round 1, and then have them removed in round 2, as well as have the middle part of the curtain removed. Now while Pig Patch doesn't attack through this entrance, the other animatronics in later minigames will be able to, and this is the game's way of hinting towards that happening. This now leaves the jump scare as the final feature left to add, which as always uses a separate model of the animatronic in a room above the main play area. The way we'll be teleported up there is when the Pig Patch armor stand in the vents gets close enough to the office, 
where more colored concrete is placed under it to trigger a command block. From there the jump scare animation is going to play out, before then every command block used in the minigame is going to reset for the next time we want to play it. This is always the hardest part of any minigame, as making sure all of the command blocks get set back to the right way can take a long time to do, especially if there's so many of them to go through. But after the jump scare ends and everything else resets, we'll then be teleported to the game over room, where as always we have the option to try the game again or to go back to the hub. Then moving over to the game one room, we once again have the exact same options, but this time we have the prize machine to get our reward for winning, which for this minigame is the pig patch model to display in the hub. Now since every minigame I've made so far in this video has had a model to display on the stage, I'll be holding this off until all three minigames have been completed, so that way I can add all three at the same time. Finally, we then have the tutorial room at the start of the game, which while it works in the exact same way as every other one, the way we access it involves one extra step. Since first aid with pig patch is a level that unlocks after beating another minigame, we first need to make sure that the player has actually completed cold storage before being able to play it. So what I've done is added a new scoreboard for when we beat cold storage that will then be set to 1 once we enter its prize room. This will then power a command block over in the hub that will replace the locked item in the game selection minecart with the proper one for the first aid level. Now when we throw that item from the minecart it will teleport us to the tutorial room like any other level and we're finally able to play the game. And that is now everything to do with the first first aid level. There was a lot to go through just there, especially with the different tasks, which speaking of, I actually forgot to go over two entire tasks that we can get. So to quickly go over them both, the first one starts with us using a thermometer to take Helpy's temperature and then to give him some pills, and the other one just simply has us using a cooling item on Helpy's head. The mechanics of all of them are pretty similar to what we've already set up, and hopefully we'll be able to see them properly when we play the minigame later on. But either way, those two tasks have now been added alongside some proper sound effects that will now play throughout the game. So it's finally time to move on to the next minigame, but instead of taking a look at a completely different one, I want to keep on working on first aid and next take a look at first aid with Lefty. Instead of starting all over just to end up with something almost exactly the same, I'll be reusing most of the commands I've already made, as well as the office itself that we play in. However, there are a few changes that need to be made to it first, since Lefty's level makes the office look more run down compared to the first one. So to alternate between the two different versions of the office, I've set up two scoreboards to label which minigame is currently active, which will then clone a copy of the room up into the play area. Now these scoreboards are going to become very important as I make this minigame, as they will let me reuse the same commands from before, but while still being able to split them into groups for the two different minigames. So taking a look at the gameplay itself, five new tasks get added to the mix, while also having some older ones return as well. Starting with the easiest one, the first task begins with Helpy having an eye infection, and we have to use a spray bottle to disinfect it. For this task, Helpy's head is going to get swapped out for one with green eyes to let us know that the task has been selected. After that, we just have to simply crouch while holding the same spray bottle item from before while looking at Helpy's head. This will then put Helpy's original head back on to then complete the task. The next one is just as simple as it also only has one step to finish. Sometimes one of Helpy's arms will be broken and we have to put a cast around it to put it back to normal. In Minecraft, Helpy's arm will stick out to the side and then have its colour change to grey to indicate that the arm has been broken. After that we just have to simply crouch while holding the new cast item, but this time Helpy's arm colour is going to change to blue to make it look like the cast has been put on. Now moving on to the tasks with multiple steps, this next one also has Helpy with a broken arm, but this time instead of just putting a brace around it, we also have to connect it together by using a stapler. This meant that two new items needed to be added, which are each going to serve their own different purpose. When we crouch in front of Helpy's arm while holding the new arm brace, it will then remove it from our inventory to show that it's been used, before then teleporting a new silverfish up into the build to act as the hitbox for when we want to use the stapler. This is because when we staple the brace together, there's a 50-50% chance that we can miss it and hit Helpy's arm instead, which will then cause them to cry out loud. If this doesn't happen though, then we don't have to worry about using the mask on Helpy and can instead just move on to the next round. The next task we can get is actually reused from the previous minigame where we have to use the thermometer to take Helpy's temperature, but instead of using the blue pills, we have to give Helpy the yellow ones instead. Just like the pen and hammer task, this one also has an armor stand that teleports up to Helpy's head, so that way the stick looks like it's inside of Helpy's mouth. Once a command block detects that the armor stand is holding the item, we'll then be able to finish the task by crouching and holding the yellow pills in our hand. 
Finally, the last task starts with Helpy infected with rabies, and we have to give him the right injection shot to make him go away. The first thing I did was set up three different armor stands with diorite in their hands, which will act as the bubbles coming out of Helpy's mouth. From there, I next made the item for the syringe and the four different medical liquids, which are each going to be stored in the minecart to the right. However, since we're not able to combine different items together like we can in Help Wanted, the way the command block is going to send an output is if we're holding the syringe item while also carrying the correct color of dye. Once we use the syringe item on Helpy though, it's then going to cause him to scream in pain since Helpy is always going to get hurt by the injection shot. So to finish the task, we just need to simply use the mask on him to stop the animatronics from getting us from the vents. Now that the tasks have been added and work properly, I then added the monitor system to show us where unhealthy the injury is and what we need to do to fix it. Just like before, only the command blocks with an active scoreboard will be able to power the clone commands, which will then copy the player heads up into the build whenever we use the scanner on healthy. Next, we need a way for these tasks to actually get selected for each round, but I'm not able to use the same randomizer from before as tasks work a little bit differently compared to the previous minigame. Instead of starting with one task in round one and working up to three in round three, from now on all of the first aid levels have three tasks in every round and there are no restrictions on which ones we can get at the same time. So I set up a brand new randomizer that will power at the start of every round, which will then choose three out of the five new tasks we've just gone over. However, as I mentioned earlier, there are also some returning tasks from the pig patch minigame, so four more armor stands were added to the randomizer so that way those tasks have a chance to get selected alongside the new ones. Now instead of remaking those tasks again for this minigame, if the older tasks get selected, it will then power the same task commands from the pig patch minigame since their commands still count towards completing a task. Now that we're able to play through all three rounds, the next thing to do is to swap out pig patch and replace him with lefty. However, instead of making a whole new armor stand model that would need its own command system to work, I thought it'd be a lot easier to just have a chain of command blocks replace the pink armor of pig patch to match the colors of lefty. This is done by using the item replace command for every piece of armor, which will then swap out between the different sets of armor that are stored in this chest. The only extra change needed is for Lefty's hat, which will teleport a brand new armor stand along with the rest of his body. Now while all of the teleport commands for Pig Patch can still work for Lefty, I needed to make a separate copy of each one for each direction since Lefty moves much faster than Pig Patch does. So inside of each copy, I slightly increased the numbers to speed up how fast he teleports, and then put an execute command at the start of each one to only let the commands power if Lefty's level is currently being played. From there, all of the other mechanics are the exact same where he'll move towards us if Helpy gets hurt, but will back away when the mask is being used. There is an exception to this though, as unlike with Pig Patch, we actually need to be looking at Lefty to make him go away, otherwise he'll stay in the vent and get closer to us if we're not looking at him. To make this work, I've placed an armor stand on each side of the office, and then set a command block to detect whenever we're looking at either one of them. This will then power a scoreboard that's connected to the teleport commands, which will now only trigger the commands to make him leave if Helpy stops screaming and if we're looking at the vent that Lefty is in. With that aside, let's now take a look at the third way that Lefty can attack us, which is through the curtain in front of us that opens up during round 3. This time I did have to make a new model of Lefty since the movements are much different than the ones in the vents, but this let me get a lot more creative with how I can make him look by using different armor stands. When I was finished, I then put a line of concrete underneath the floor so that way when Lefty teleports up into the build, he'll have a path to follow towards the office. Then when we use the mask on Helpy, the blocks are going to change to different ones to then reverse Lefty's movements to turn back around. And this didn't take long to set up as it's just a straight path forward without any corners in the way, so I then went ahead and added in a quick walking animation to go along with it. To now finish things up, if Lefty makes it close enough to the curtain, a block underneath the floor will trigger the same jump scare commands as in Pig Patch before then ending the minigame. Now obviously Pig Patch isn't the one who jump scares us anymore, so I once again made a system that will change the outfit of the armor stand to look like Lefty, since both of their jump scare animations are almost the exact same. And since I also connected this with the minigame specific scoreboard, the armor will change to the character needed to fit whichever minigame is currently being played. This now leaves one last feature left for the entire minigame, which are the ads that will play on the TV. These work just like in FNAF 6, where it will start to make a loud noise that will then attract the animatronics towards us. 
So to get started, a randomizer will clone one of four different player heads up into the office by using a repeating command block, which will stop us from being able to view a task while an ad is playing. At the same time, the movement commands for Lefty will be turned on by using a new scoreboard that detects for whenever this happens. And even if Helpy isn't screaming or if we're looking at the vent that Lefty is in, he'll keep on moving towards us until it leads to the jump scare. So to defend against this, I've added a new item to act as the TV remote that will skip the ad when we crouch with it in our hand. This will then remove the scoreboard to set Lefty back to how he normally works, which will then let us push him back by looking at him until he eventually leaves. So now with all of the gameplay finally finished and fully working, it's now time to go back to the game one room so that way we can get our prize for winning. Luckily, I'm able to reuse all three rooms from the pig patch minigame since Lefties has the exact same features and the only thing that needs changing is the prize that we get. And by using the scoreboard that splits the two minigames, we're able to give player the lefty model when we beat first aid with lefty while still being able to get pig patch for playing the other one. Then for us to actually play the game itself, we once again need to make sure that we've beaten the previous level before unlocking the new one. So just like with cold storage, a new scoreboard will be set to one once we beat first aid with pig patch, which will then replace the lock item in the menu with the item for the new minigame. Once we throw it, the menu commands will then be able to send an output, which will then teleport us to the tutorial room. But to make sure that the right first aid level is active for the item that we throw, the minigame scoreboard is used one last time, which will then swap out the office and the animatronic armor stands to fit the one for that level. Finally, as one last detail for when we beat Lefty's level, the item for the next minigame is going to appear in the menu minecart. However, instead of being able to play it right away, this is the first time a glitched item is going to appear, which will stay locked until we eventually find the Vanny Mask later on. Until then though, there are a lot more minigames to get through, but as of now, we have finally completed all of the minigames I wanted to for part 2 of this project. And to be honest, this was probably the most fun one to build as well so far, just because finding a way to reuse all of these command blocks but to make it work for something else was pretty cool to figure out. Even the minigame itself was fun to put together, as it all takes place in such a small area, and I really like how I managed to make it all work together. But now this leaves only one thing left before we can finally playtest it, and that's to add in the animatronic models up on the stage in the hub. So to start, I first made a new armor stand model of each animatronic from all three minigames underneath the main stage. Now the way we can select to put one on the stage itself is by throwing the player heads that we win by beating a minigame from the gallery selection minecart. This then powers a toggle flip flop that will teleport each armor stand up into the main build where we can look at them in more detail. Now the way I originally had the minecart appear was by interacting with the sign in front of the stage but I've decided to change it out for a button on the table to make it more obvious and realistic to the game. When we click on it it will then teleport the minecart to us which will then let us throw an item from inside of it to put an animal animatronic on the stage. It's a small detail that doesn't matter to the gameplay itself, but it's still nice to be able to see a full view of the animatronics without them trying to jump scare us. And that now completely finishes up everything to do with part 2 of this project, which now brings the total command block count from just under 2,500 in part 1 to now just under 5,000. As always though, it's always fun to see the work slowly come together, especially since every minigame is completely different every time. But with that being said though, it's now time to hop back into VR once again and see if we can survive these three help wanted 2 minigames in Minecraft. I hope that you enjoy it and let's see how we do. So here we are once again in the VR version of the Minecraft world. Last time we did this, everything surprisingly translated really well over to VR, and all of the testing I've always done has always been in the flat mode, so even this is going to be somewhat of a relatively new experience, since I'm actually going to be playing it in VR now, and I'm actually in the world that I'm playing in. But let's go ahead and get started with the first minigame, which is over in the backstage category, and let's take a look at Arts and Crafts in the daycare. Get your hands dirty with some paints and paper pals in the Superstar Daycare, throw to start. Let's go ahead and get right into it and go through the tutorial tip. So copy the art exactly. Go ahead and look at the next one. Use a dart gun to shoot the objects you need. Sun will toss them to you. And the last one, don't run out of time. Sun will be very upset. That should be it now. Yep, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it and see what this is going to be like in VR. If I could actually face the right direction. Oh, wow. <laughs> Once again, I forget how big VR Minecraft actually is, but I'm on a time limit here, so I can't really look around as much as I might like to, because being in my Minecraft Pizzaplex in VR is actually a lot cooler than I thought it might be, but like I said, we're on a time limit, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have to make the Bonnie template, so let's go ahead and get started with a blue banner. I think I remember how to make these, however, it has been a while since I worked on this minigame, 
So hopefully my memory serves correct and I know what I'm doing. So the first thing we want to do is make the eyes. So for that, we're going to need a Minecraft creeper eye pattern for this. So let's go ahead and put that in the right place. This is going to be the hardest part is just using the UI and VR. Everything else is relatively simple, but let's just go ahead and get that done with. So after the eyes, I'm pretty sure it is the nose. So let's go ahead and use black dye for this. Go ahead and put that there. And then we want the circle dot in the middle, just like that. From there, what do we want? So pretty sure, no, yeah, we want that. <laughs> I thought I hit the prompt to go over to the next page, but apparently I didn't, which is good because we need that die right there. The hitboxes for these seem to be a little bit off. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. I guess the VR version of Minecraft has different hitboxes when it comes to things, which I suppose makes sense. However, when I'm on a time limit like this and there's actual stakes to uh, beat, I don't really appreciate that. Let's go ahead and do that. So once again, we need black. So that's going to be for the mouth. How are we on time? About halfway. All right, so we still got some time. And I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. At least I hope I am, so that's there. Now let's go ahead and get white dye for the teeth, which should be the last one we need. If I can find the right angle for this, there we go. Go ahead and put the banner in. Come on, hurry up. This is the hardest part of it, just this. We're still good on time, which is good. Scroll down, put that there, and that's it. So one final check, is that the same? Yep, looks good to me. So let's go ahead and put that there. Go ahead and submit it. And there we go. All right, so we did it right. Sun's picking it up, and now he's just going to drop it in the shredder. There it goes. All right, now, round two. Let's go ahead and get started with a paper pal. And this is probably going to be a whole lot more chaotic to do because we have a whole lot more that we need to do. But let's go ahead and get started with the head, which is right there. See how much we can get on a single page while we're at it. So red, torso, none of that. Anything here? Is there really nothing here that we need? It doesn't. Yes. Okay, there's yellow boots there. At least that's something at least so that goes on the bottom there yep that's it for this page all right and we've also got the light bulbs to watch out for as well which with these hit boxes that we just went over that's not going to be fun so hopefully i don't accidentally hit one of the uh the light bulbs and end up getting jump scared by moon while trying to do this go ahead and get this red chest plate right there cannot find the hitbox for it i'm not sure what's up with that that was not designed by me i tested this out plenty of times in flat mode and it worked just fine so I'm just going to try work my way around this the best I can and get these white boots. That's going to be for this hand right there. How are we on time? Just under halfway. Yeah, you can see this is taking a whole lot longer to do just because there's more stuff we need to go over. Blue boots. I need those for the... Oh, no, I've already done that. All right. So next one we now need... Let's focus on the hand. So there we go. Orange pants right there. I can go ahead and find the hitbox for this. Did I get it? Yep, I did. There we go. That goes in the middle. And now we just need white pants. So right there. All right, that's good. Scroll over. This is the hardest part as well. Did it get replaced by the light bulb? There it is. All right, that's good. At least it's just right there. I got worried for a second. So that seems to be the same. No, I need blue pants for the arm. I completely missed out on that, actually. It's purple. No pants here. Red. Purple again. I need blue. Where am I? Just over halfway. I've still got some time. But I need to hope that none of the light bulbs actually replace the item I need. Which I'm not getting lucky with right now. Oh, where is it? There we go. All right. Last item. That's all we need. Trying to find the hitbox for it. There we go. We got it just in time as well. Go ahead and submit it. There we go. That was the correct copy as well. Good thing because I did not double check that. And here we go. Final round. So let's go ahead and get right into it again. So smiley face. Lots of orange, which is good because there's a lot of it right here already. So orange tunic, anything yellow, anything red, anything blue. Nope, that is the wrong piece of armor. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Yes, I need that actually. Go ahead and get this purple leggings like that. Next page. All right, red boots, nope. Anything orange, no. Anything purple, nope, I got that one all done. All right, next one again. Let's just keep on cycling through until we get something. Yellow, orange I've done, red, nope, white, nope. I'm not getting lucky right now, am I? Red boots, there we go. Go ahead and take that. How am I on time? Oh, I'm way on time, all right. I got a bit worried for a second. I thought I was behind since it was taking so long to find things. All right, next page, there we go. Some white leggings, I need those for the arm. If I can ignore Sun's hitbox for a second and actually hit the thing I need. Orange boots, yep, that's good. We can go ahead and take those. Find the hitbox for this, this is really weird. 
Got the yellow, nope. So all I need is the head, the hand, and the arm. And then we'll be good to go. So orange, nope, white, nope. Of course, I'm getting the opposite colors for the bits I need. I also need the head as well. There we go, orange, leggings. Go ahead and put that there, just over halfway. All right, I think we've got this. I'm not too worried. However, I want to make sure I actually do this in time and don't get unlucky with all of the randomizers here. So orange leggings are my priority right now. I also still need the head, not that one. Whatever I find first, honestly. There we go. All right. I already got those leggings. No, I need the white boots, actually. I didn't even notice that. All right. White boots. And that's the head up there that we need, actually. So it's all right here. I'm getting lost in stuff. So there we go. Put that there. Go ahead and get the final item. And the hitbox hit the zombie. <laughs> Where am I in time? Oh, God. Okay. Now I actually need to start panicking. With right here as well. Hopefully I can find that again. Go ahead and find hitbox for that. Put it there and submit it. Ooh, we are getting very close on time. Got unlucky with the zombie hitbox just now, but there we go. That is all three all completed. And we've beaten the first minigame, so I'd say it probably didn't work as well as I would have liked just because of the hitboxes. But overall, that was probably just still as fun to play as an actual help wanted to itself. So let's go ahead and collect our prize for this, which is going to be the sun model that we can display in the hub. So there we go, there's the sun head. And if we go back to the hub, we should see right in front of us is the sun animatronic up on stage. Very cool. I'm gonna have him up on the stage for the time being just so we can have the pizzeria a bit more decorated. Cause as of now, the only thing that's actually staying here is the bonker bomb poster we have over there. Everything else so far has just been an animatronic up on the stage, which while I still like them, I would like it if we had more of the posters around as well as the other attractions like the discount ball pit and the fruit punch and lemonade clown. We'll get to those eventually, but as of now, let's just go ahead and move on to the next mini game, which is going to be over in the staff only category once again. And let's take a look at first aid pig patch. Learn common medical procedures from the safety of a simulated pizza place training booth. Let's go ahead and get started with that. We beat cold storage last time, so we of course have access to this. So let's get right into it. So use the scanner gun to see what's wrong with Helpy. I'm actually looking forward to this one. Use a diagnostic monitor to see what's wrong with Helpy. Look at the television to see how to fix it. And the final one, don't make too much noise. If Helpy gets loud, quiet him with the gas mask. If the television malfunctions, use the TV remote. And that is it. Let's go ahead and get started. Luckily, we don't need to worry too much about that last one because it's not active for the first round. Okay, all right, this is a lot more claustrophobic than I thought it would be. All right, and here we are, right into it. It's really weird how Minecraft scaling works because it looks much bigger, but it also makes things a lot scarier. It shouldn't be this big, but it makes it 10 times scarier. And when those vents open up and when that curtain opens, it's probably going to make things terrifying. Like, even Helpy here, definitely way bigger than he should be, even by using... I don't know why that immediately went there. Even while using smaller armor stands, Helpy is a lot bigger than you would expect. But let's go ahead and use the scanner and get started. So the first one is at the head. We can see we can see the bulging part right there. So let's just go ahead and use the cooler and go ahead and get started. Very similar to what we did in cold storage, actually, by melting all of the ice pieces. So go ahead and get that out of the way. There we go. Easy done. Go ahead and give him a candy. He's much bigger than I thought he would be. And let's move on to the next one. That was really easy. Right. What's next? I don't like that. <laughs> I actually really don't like that at all. That's horrible. Seeing an animatronic crawling out of there, not looking forward to it actually, but uh, let's not worry about that right now. For the time being, we're somewhat safe. But when we get onto Lefty's level, that's gonna be fun. So yeah, broken leg, let's go ahead and get the stretcher. Go ahead and put that on his leg, just like that. And the next task, we can see he's got some uh, dirty hands. So let's go ahead and use the cloth. Go ahead and take that out and then just clean his hands up a bit. <laughs> Not looking forward to when there's an animatronic right there. Uh, something else I also remember from the first episode is that the way the cursor works, it doesn't follow my head like it usually would in Minecraft. What it does is it follows my hand. So I'm just now having the thought that if an animatronic appears in one of the vents, I'm going to have to point at them instead of just looking at them because otherwise the game isn't going to think that I'm actually looking at them as my hand's going to be doing is going to be focusing on the tasks. I still don't like that. That is a lot closer than I want it to be. Let's go ahead and move on to the final round where Pig Patch has now become active. So first task, use the hammer. All right, here we go. Hopefully things will be okay. All right. Where? Which side? Okay. Oh, God, there he is. 
No, I don't like that. Put the mask on. I'm sorry, Helpy, but I can assure you that scares me a whole lot more than that axe did. Oh, I don't like that. I, th I don't like these environments. That's the thing about VR. The jump scares are one thing, but I don't think I would ever get used to the environments like this. Even in a cartoony world like Minecraft, I still don't like it. Like, if you remember Ballora Gallery from the last episode, I hated that. Any dark room, I did not like. And having everything so close to me as well, I don't like it either. Let's see if we can find the hitbox to put this in your mouth. There we go. Still a little bit finicky because we are in VR, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Go ahead and give him the pills. There we go. All right, so final task. What's that going to be? Use a spray bottle on his legs. Yep, I see that. Let's go ahead and get the correct disinfectant spray. Go ahead and spray his legs. There we go. And then the last thing to do is to put a plaster over it. All right, so right there. Go ahead and crouch. Give him the item, and there we go. That is all three tasks all done. Give him the candy, and we've completed the first first aid level. Honestly, that worked out really well. It's definitely a lot better than Arts and Crafts did. But let's go ahead and get our prize, which is, of course, going to be... If eventually... Pig Patch. There we go. So now when we go back to the hub, just like how we saw Sun there originally, we now have Pig Patch, which, now that he's actually on the stage in a full-body view, is still a lot bigger. Not sure how much I like that, but that was fun. Honestly, really like that. Definitely one of the more fun ones out of everything we've done so far. But that leaves us with one last one, which should now hopefully be unlocked. So if I go ahead and throw the item there, we now have access to First Aid Lefty. Continue your medical training without the pressure of human consequences. Let's get into it. All right, let's see how much worse this is going to be. So this should be the same. Use scanner gun to see what's wrong with Helpy. I'm just going to go through it one more time. He's look at the diagnostic monitor to see what's wrong with Helpy. Look at the televisions to see how to fix it. And the last one, don't make too much noise. If Helpy gets too loud, quiet him with the gas mask. If the TV malfunctions, use the TV remote. That's the one we need to pay attention to this time. So it might be best to actually just have it on hand at all time. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. All right, so Helpy, let's, try, let's give this a go. So I'm just going to have this on hand at all time. This is going to be in my inventory at all times. I don't trust it. All right, so first thing to do, give him the injection slot. So there we go. Take the syringe. Take uh, the correct disinfectant spray. I guess the end rod emits light, which is why everything just got so much brighter. I don't mind that. All right. Use the mask. Oh, God, no. Okay, point at him. I need to point at him. <laughs> this isn't going to be fun. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. All right, so... Yeah, I, I guess this just emits light. Go ahead and put this back so that way we don't have a, a clogged up inventory space. So next task, what do we have on the arm? And that is to use a arm brace. Oh God, okay, close the inventory. Let's switch things off. Ah, uh, no, go No, 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 no. The further you are away from me, the better at this point. It's silly that I have to point at them. So what do I need? The arm rest, all right, so arm cast. We go, let's go ahead and use that. There we go. Is that it for the task? One more. Yeah, use the uh, the stretcher on his leg again. So, put that there. there we go, all done. And let's just move on right to the next one. All right. All right, this isn't gonna be fun, especially when that curtain opens. I'm dreading that. All right, get right into it. Go ahead and take out the TV remote, which is more important than anything else right now. I really don't want Lefty to get me for a silly reason. All right, first task, we need to take his temperature. And just as I do, go ahead and mute that. Go away, Lefty. The vents are a whole lot bigger than they should be compared to Help Wanted 2. But again, that just makes it a bit scarier. Do I need that? So take the thermometer, go ahead and put it right there. And now the yellow pill. So the, mo the mostly magical malaria morsels, which is a mouthful. Yep, I had to rename every single one of those for this gameplay. If you didn't know what the names of all of these items are, I do, because I had to go through all of them to make this minigame. Honestly, it's just a fun thing to go through. The names are really ridiculous. All right, so let's go ahead and spray Helpy's eyes. Yep, I didn't even notice that, actually. So if I can find the hitbox for this. There we go. TV. Nope. All right, he's coming from the same side every time, which isn't catching me off guard as much. I appreciate that. All right. And the final task should be to use the stretcher again. I'm getting this task a lot, actually. Up to random chance, though. And there we go. That is all three done. Now moving on to the final one where 
Lefty can get us from the curtain. I don't know if you noticed in the gameplay clip earlier when I showed off the mechanic of Helpy walking to the curtain, but it got it got me way off guard when I was playing the actual Help Wanted 2 game. So, uh, not looking forward to seeing him there. All right, so we've got the TV remote. Let's start out with the simple one of using disinfectant spray on his eyes. I think I'm somewhat getting used to the controls in Minecraft, which is good, especially in VR. That's like, that's like, that's like, go away. The sounds are coming from all around me. I don't like that. All right, that's good. Go ahead and scan you, use the ax. Cool, we're once again at risk of helping making a lot of noise so that lefty can come get us. I appreciate that. Thank you for not making any noise. All right, good. We're good there. All right, so next task is once again to make a lot of noise. So, all right, if I can select that item, go ahead and put that front and left there. And then, all right, thank you for not making any noise. Good, all right. Is that it? I think that's it. I'm gonna wait for the next advertisement though. I don't trust it. I don't wanna get caught off guard just after giving Helpy the candy. Come on, one more time, help, Lefty. Helpy and Lefty, your names are so similar. Same side again. Could be a bit, no, don't get that close though. <laughs> Once again, Minecraft VR being a lot bigger, I don't know how big the radius is for Lefty to get me there. I'm not going to test it. There we go. We've beaten the mini game. All right. That was a lot of fun. I still really enjoyed that. A lot more simple than the rest of the mini games, but it's still really fun nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get our final prize for the mini game, which is Lefty's head. So go back to the hub once again. And up on stage, it's Lefty. Honestly, why not? This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it once again. These are always the best part of the video is just making a game from scratch, but then playing it in VR is always a lot of fun. And I really do hope that you enjoyed it as well. Like I just mentioned, it is a whole lot of fun to be able to play these mini games in Minecraft VR, especially that as we're going along, the mini games are becoming more and more complex, which just makes them even more enjoyable to recreate and then be able to play. But with that being said, there's still one more thing we need to check out before we end this video, and those are the four different jump scares for each of the different mini games. But with that, that is now going to wrap it up for today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it as it was a lot of fun to put this build together. If you did enjoy and are excited for future projects of mine, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications turned on. That way you know next time I upload and can also help the channel to continue to grow. But with that being said, thank you everyone so much for watching and I will of course see you in my next video.